Hi River Kids, this is Miss Cindy. Today we're going to continue to look at the life of David. Um, we've, um, we're reading in 2 Samuel uh, chapters 11 and 12. And this is a different part of David's life. One that's not as happy as the rest of it. We know um, Miss Michelle talked about David and Goliath. Uh, we learned how God chose David personally to take be the king after Saul. Um, and how he was a great king, a man after God's own heart. But today's story talks about even those of us who are trying to follow God can get pulled away from the truth. And this is a, the, one of those stories. And unfortunately, David um, let that happen in his life. We have a picture here, and I want to go ahead and look at the picture. This one is David. This one is the prophet Nathan. And you see, he's pointing at David like, it's you, it's you. And David's got this look on his face like, what? Oh my goodness, how could you know what I'm talking about? So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of what Nathan said so you can understand the story. But if you can see this, I'll bring it up a little bit closer. This is a man who only has one sheep. He doesn't have very good clothes on. He's just a, a simple poor man with one sheep. You've got a guy here, lots of sheep. Well, he decided, that rich man decided he wanted to have a banquet, but he didn't want to use his sheep. He wanted this one sheep from this uh, poor guy, and guess what? He took it. And so this is the story that Nathan is telling King David. He's telling it as if it was something that happened. And David's like, I don't like that. That's wrong. Go get that man, that rich man. He should have never done that to that poor guy. And then in the Bible, this is where Nathan is pointing to David and saying, guess what? It's you I'm talking about. You're that rich guy who took the sheep from this one poor guy who only had one. What the story is, is where David decided that he was in love with another man's wife. It was Uriah. He had her spend the night while Uriah was off at war. And if David had been off at war with his uh soldiers like he God he usually went then he would not been home uh, being tempted David was tempted and he decided to have Uriah's wife over one night and then he thought no big deal but then Uriah's wife whose name was Bathsheba came and told him that she was going to have a baby well this was quite a surprise for David he's like wow now Something that I did that I didn't think people would know about may become known because Uriah hasn't been home. So he brought Uriah home and he tried to have her, um, him, go and spend the night with his wife. But Uriah was a devoted soldier and he refused to go home and be comfortable um, with his wife and with his family while he knew his other soldier friends were not. And so that didn't work for David. And it wasn't good. So David was scared again. He was like, I got to cover this up. I, you know, I've done this wrong. I've done this wrong. Um, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. So to make things even worse, he told the commander of the army to take Uriah and put him at the front of the battle to make sure he was killed. So now we have murder involved. And guess what? He was killed. And so David thinks, I'm covered. Nobody knows what's happening. I'll just marry Bathsheba and all will be well. But you know what? Who knows? You know who knows what's in our hearts and what's going on? Why? God had chosen David as king. He gave him a big responsibility. He told him that he would be with him and he would help him if he followed him all would go well. And David gave in to temptation. He did not listen to God. He thought he would follow his own passions and do what he wanted to do, and it got him in trouble. And Nathan told him that. David did repent. David admitted he was wrong. But things were still happening. Uriah was still dead, and the baby was still coming. As it turns out, the baby did not live, and David had to deal with that. He did marry Bathsheba, but then um, it was just a tough time for David. God forgave him. And God is a forgiving God. He loves everybody. He made David. But, he, but David gave God 
he broke God's heart with that. And then David had a broken heart. Bathsheba had a broken heart. Um, you know, Satan comes around to tempt us, to tell us uh, that we don't have to listen to God. There's better ways out. It's more fun to do this. It's more fun to do that. Uh, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to know. Everybody's doing it. We hear all those things. I hear it. You hear it. And it's tough. It's tough to fight it every day. Uh, but God said, turn to me. Always think about and know in your heart that God loves you, that he's got your best interest in heart. The things that he asks us not to do is not to keep us from having fun or anything. It's to keep our lives happy because David wasn't happy. David got caught, and God did forgive David. He told him he would forgive him, but that doesn't mean that he did not have to suffer any consequences. He did forgive David when David repented, and when that repented, means that he turned away. He no longer did something like that again. He followed God. Uh, we know that Jesus became the king. One of the things that Neshama told us is that God promised King David that the king would come through his lineage, through his line, through his family tree, and that was true. And Jesus was the king of our hearts. How is Jesus the perfect king? Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. Jesus never sinned. He lived on this earth like we're doing, but he didn't do anything wrong. He was God in the flesh, and he took care of us. We have sins. We know we have sins. And they're heavy, and they can weigh down. And sometimes, you know, we know sometimes that we think nobody knows. But God knows, and it makes our heart dark, and we try to be happy. But there's something that we just can't be happy. But God says, give it to me. He says, Jesus mends our broken hearts and frees us from the punishment of sin. We can take our sin. We put it on Jesus. Jesus died to overcome the punishment of sin and rose again. That's a promise. If we accept it, that's a promise. You can rely on God. He doesn't tell lies. He tells us the truth. So, Guys, I want you to know that God has a plan. He had a plan for David. He has a plan for us. You don't have to be a king to be in God's plan. But you are always a child of God, and that's important. Your daily lives and who you, who you talk to, who you deal with, you can be an inspiration to them. Show them God's love because it's a better day. When we get in trouble, we don't like it. But God says, try to do what's right, and you will be able to have the better life than the life of someone who's constantly getting in trouble because they think it's okay. They think, oh, no big deal. We can be blessed. We can be blessed by God. Our lives can be blessed and be happy. Things happen, I know, that we can't control. I know this virus is something like that. We're uh, separated, um, and sometimes it's actually, you know, starting to get to me a little bit. I'm tired of feeling like I'm afraid of people. I can't go near anybody. Um, and here comes school. And I'm hoping that your experience with school will be one that's pretty normal, as normal as it can be, where you can enjoy being around people your age. I hope we get back to, to church. I know we are supposed to in September um, and see each other, even if it's from a distance. Let's pray. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for telling us about David, a man after your own heart, who made some bad choices but repented, and you forgave him. Lord, we know that you love us, and that now we have Jesus to know the story of the Bible, the event where he died for our sins. God, help us to make right choices. We love you. Keep us healthy. Keep us safe. And in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. You take care.